Okay, so welcome to lecture number six. So finally uh, I'm able to produce my slides with audio. Um, yeah, lecture six. So what do we do? We start with a small repetition of the last two lectures. So in the last two lectures we, we spoke about um, two basic sampling methods. One was the inverse transform method and the other accepts and rejection. Inverse transfer method relies on knowledge of the cumulative distribution function of the distribution which we want to sample from. We want to sample from pi and f is then the corresponding dis distribution function. What we also need for the inverse transform method is the pseudo-inverse if of f. So f is a distribution function, so we compute these probabilities here and f doesn't need to be um, classically invertible, but we can always compute the pseudo-inverse. What's the pseudo-inverse? So for a given y, we are looking for all the x such that f of x is greater or equal than y, then we take the smallest one. If we can't take the smallest one, then we take the infimum. So having this pseudo-inverse, well, at best it's explicitly available, um, then we have solved our sampling problem. So we want to sample from pi and then proposition, the next proposition tells us so if we have a uniformly distributed variable on 0, 1 we plug it in our i of f then i of f has the correct distribution which means that this probability here p of i of f of u less or equal than x is exactly f of x. So inverse transfer method is theoretically nice, but it relies on knowing f and knowing i of f. The other method we had was exception-rejection sampling. Exception-rejection sampling uses a proposal and a test um, in this procedure. And the proposal is from a different distribution, and then we test with another independent variable and the ratio of the pseudo-densities whether we accept this proposal or not. So x and y are random variables with pseudo-densities f and g. We want to sample from x and we can sample from, from y. Okay, then we need a bit of notation. So curly x, curly x is the support of the density of f, density of pseudo-density, and the other pseudo-density g has to be chosen in such a way that g dominates f. So we can sample it from y, y corresponds to g, we want to sample it from x, x, x corresponds to f. And then here we have uh, accepting rejection sampling in a nutshell. So if we are able to sample additionally for a uh, uniform distribution on 0, 1 independent of y, then we have solved our problem to sample from x. Why? Because the probabilities of capital X less or equal than small x is a equal to the conditional probability of y less or equal than x under the condition that this test here is fulfilled. So u is less or equal than f of y divided by g of y. So here is our test. So we sample y corresponding to the pseudo-density g. Um, then we check this ratio here after having sampled also u. And if this is OK, then we keep our sample from y and the sample from y is a sample from x. And otherwise, we reject and do it again. So in the last lecture we had this long um, ge geometric derivation which nicely captures the idea and here we have the compact version of this. But this is um, accepting rejection sampling. And proving the proposition 6.1 is an exercise of the actual sheet. Um, you can do this going through all the um, steps from last time, but you can also start by writing down what this conditional expectation, uh, conditional probability, sorry, uh, means here with the densities we have. We have the density of u, we have the density of y, they are independent, and then you can start to compute.